Genesis chapter 1, the Bible says, God made man in his image. God created man in his image. A likeness. The likeness of God talks about the nature of God. And we can talk about the nature of God without investigating what really is the nature of God. And if you know the nature of God, we can get the testimony of men that came face to face with the nature of God. The likeness of God. And Moses in this arena is in a better place to give us a reflection of the nature, likeness of God. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 11, Moses speaking, he said, Who is like unto thee, O God, glorious in holiness, fearful in praises, doing wonders? So we see the nature or the likeness of God is the nature of glory, the nature that is fearful, and the nature of wonders. And if we are created or made in His image, then we are supposed to be glorious in our lives. We are supposed to be fearful to our enemies. And also, we are supposed to reflect the wonders, the miracles of God. And every child of God with this understanding must desire to walk in the miraculous. Must know you are an instrument for miracles. And the walking of miracles should be part of your daily life as a child of God. That is why I prophesy to you, hearing the sound of my voice, in the name that is above every other name, that from this day, there is an impartation of the grace of miracles. How sweet it is to walk in miracles. How sweet it is to operate in the wonders of God. In John chapter 3 verse 6, the Bible said we are born of the spirit. He said that which is born of the flesh is flesh. And that which is born of the spirit is spirit. If we are born of the spirit of God, then we are supposed to be like him. Means we are spirit. And if we are spirit like God, as God is a spirit, then we are supposed to reflect his nature. The, and one of his nature is the working of miracles. The operations of signs and wonders. I am believing God that there's somebody under the sound of a voice that heaven will invest the miracle power of God upon him. I believe there's somebody under the sound of a voice that there shall be a deployment of divine abilities in your life. But hear me, child of God, that we are sons of Zion. We are called into the miracle. The day you get born again, the day you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, in that day you become a sign and a wonder in the end realm. You are not an ordinary man. You are not an ordinary woman. You are not natural. You are supernatural. I want to speak to you today. May the supernatural abilities of God begin to express themselves in your life. You must not be an apostle or a prophet like me or a pastor or a teacher evangelist to operate in miracles. The day you receive Jesus as your Lord and Savior, there is an investment of God's miracle grace in your life. You hear me? Jesus came to reconcile us back to God. But the Holy Ghost came to restore us back into God's wonders. You didn't get what I'm saying. Jesus Christ came to reconcile us. The Bible says and God was in him reconciling the world back unto himself. But the Holy Ghost came to restore. He said, I will restore unto you the years that the canker worm have eaten. That is Joel chapter 2 verse 25. Then what are those years? In verse 28 he said, and in those days, in the last days, by the coming of the Holy Ghost, he said, your sons and daughters, they shall prophesy. In verse 29 he said, and through the hands of my servant, I will write mighty signs and wonders. So the Holy Ghost came. To, the Pentecost was an initiation back into the realm of God. The, realm, the immortal realm. We, we begin to operate as God in the earth realm. You must understand every child of God that has 
the moment you receive Jesus as your Lord and personal Savior, the moment you are called into this family of Abraham, there is an investment upon your life, the ability to walk wonders. And that's why I make this proclamation and this declaration from this pulpit. Everyone connected, associated to this mantle. I, Apostle Prophet P. Collins Nyan, I prophesy upon your life an impartation of the grace of the working of miracles. It's part of our ministry. You must understand. The ministry of walking of miracles is part of the ministry of the believer. It's not the ministry of the faithful. It's the ministry of the believer. We means any believer can operate in the ministry of miracles. The walking of miracles. A call into the miraculous. Hear me, hear me very well. Every time you partake in the Holy Communion, what happens is that you take a portion of his nature. In John chapter 6 verse 51, Jesus speaking, say, he that eat of my flesh, eat the reason, shall have eternal life. So the moment you take the Holy Communion into you, you take that life of Christ, that sway, we call it in Greek sway, sway means the life of God, that life of God, that brings the energizing of the spirit, that brings the abilities of God, is invested, imparted, activated upon your life, the moment you take the Holy Communion. And that is why I encourage every believer should make it a lifestyle, a culture, to always partake in the Holy Communion. You must understand, salvation is the beginning point into the journey into the realm of the miracles there's a realm of the miracles there's the realm of wonders there's the realm of signs and the moment you receive Jesus as your personal Lord and Savior you are initiated into the realm of God you are initiated into the supernatural realms of God you are initiated into the realm of the miraculous you must not be a prophet you must not be a pastor you must not be an apostle, teacher, evangelist to operate in the miraculous the beginning point into that journey of the miracle realm is that the point of the cross the cross of Jesus is the gateway into the realm of the miraculous anyone that have not encountered the cross of Jesus cannot operate in miracles and the cross of Jesus is is the symbol of surrender me only men that have surrendered to the will of God surrender to the will of the spirit surrender to the leadership of God only this man can access the realm of the miraculous and that is the reason why in church today we are not seeing the miraculous the miraculous because there are few broken men in the church there are few broken men in the church the Bible says a broken and a contrite spirit God will not despise a broken and a contrite spirit God is looking for broken men men who don't depend on their power men who don't depend, depend on their own intelligence men who don't depend on the systems of the world but they depend, they depend on the abilities of the spirit they depend on the power of the divine and these are the men that will operate in the miracles you can be in church and even though you are marked for the miracles but never see miracles because you depend on your own ability so when you encounter the cross that point where you say God you know what I have done it by my power I have tried by my will but now not my will but I will be done when you reach that point the portals of the miracle realm get open unto you the cross the call into the miraculous yeah, me, sir. we need evidence to prove that we are sons of Zion you can't say you are a son of Abraham if the works of Abraham are not revealed in your life you can't say you are part of this kingdom you are a citizen of this kingdom where the, the inheritance of the sons of this kingdom are not evident in your life how can you say you are a son of God if the evidences are not in your life a song in Zion by the scepter in your hand. What makes a king the king is the scepter in his hand or the ring in his finger or the crown on his head. Hear me, hear me well. When the son of the prodigal, the, the prodigal son returned, the first thing the father said is that put on him a royal robe and put the ring in his finger. In other words, he had lost that, that, that authority. He had lost that 
we should make him a prince. But now I restore. So the Holy Ghost came to put back that rope, came to restore that ring. Ring is a symbol of power back to the church. And so the Holy Ghost is here to, to, to make manifest the splendor of God's glory. And that splendor is revealed through miracles, signs, and wonders. And but this is for men that return as the prodigal son who are seekers of God, men hungry, passionate to see the abilities of God. I don't know about you. I don't want a kind of Christianity without evidence. There's no difference between a Christian today and unbeliever today because there is no longer the hunger in our heart to see the dimensions of God revealed in the end realm. There are few men that can now journey into the banks of the divine and deploy dimensions in God that are not revealed. But God is raising a breed of believers, men, Christians, who will walk in the miraculous. Believers who will not just say God's word, but they shall be speaking by the manifestations that will follow their, their ministries and their calling. We are in an era of miracles, signs, and wonders. The war has become very complex. We can't we can win the war with this kind of Christianity. We can't win the war with this, with this, with this, with this, with this Christianity without evidence. The war is looking for signs. They came to Jesus. They said, "Show us a sign, and we will believe." In, even in our time, the war is saying, "We are. We don't deny Jesus, but show us a sign to believe that, that Jesus is alive." And the way in which we witness Him, we project Him, and make manifest and stand and declare that truly is alive is to rule them. Manifestation of miracles. We are called into that realm. In Acts chapter 2, verse 22, Jesus was revealed as the Son of God through miracles. He said, No one can do these things except God be with him. You hear me and hear me very well. You must be conscious that you are called into the miraculous. You must desire to walk into the in the realm of the miraculous. Any Christianity that does not express the miracles is an incomplete gospel. And that's why the world is not convinced of us anymore. Because we say things that we don't manifest. But God is looking for hungry men, men angry in their spirit, who will not just be contented at the letter, but they will desire to see a revelation of the Rema. These are the men the world is looking after. Who will not talk healing, they will manifest healing. Who will not talk prosperity but mani manifest prosperity? Who will pray for the blind? The blind will see. Who will pray for the lame? The lame will walk. Where are these men? Where are these men? In Matthew 14, verse 28, Peter said, Master, is it you? If you are the one walking over the command me to come, there was a desire to experience the miraculous. You can't uh, op operate in God's miracle power. You can't operate in the miraculous without a desire in your spirit. The miraculous realm is a man with passion, with a burning fire, fire in their bones, seeking to see the hand of God revealed through them. I refuse to be contented. I refuse to settle at this point. There are realms in God that are not yet unveiled. There are miracles that have not yet been revealed. But God is looking for a hungry man. And the joy is that for thee the hunger and thirst, they shall be filled. I prophesy to you here in the sound of a voice, a fresh impartation of desire, a fresh impartation of hunger, a fresh fire will begin to burn in your bones. In the name of Jesus. Hear me, hear me very well. The war is looking for miracles. The world is full of miracle seekers. It's either we give them what they need or they will not hear our gospel. Many pastors that can no longer manifest, preachers that can no longer manifest, say, hey, people are jumping from church to church because miracles. Yes, everybody loves miracles. So what we must do is not complain that they are looking for miracles. What we must do is to make the miracles available for them. You are not getting what I'm saying. Jesus looked at Peter and looked at the disciples and said, These people are hungry. Give them something to eat. He was talking about miracles. Give them miracles. If they are looking for miracles, give them. If they are looking for bread, give them the bread. Not saying people are looking for miracles. Look at me. No. The greatest thing we should be happy is that they desire miracles. And our laboring should be to make the miracles available and not complain. It's a joy when the child is feeding well. So what we are doing as a father should be to make the food available. But we are now in a season of scarcity.
opportunity. And that's why we complain that they are looking for miracles. If we're in the season of spiritual abundance, miracle abundance like as a whole, we used to be happy that there are men seeking for what we have. Peter said, as such as we have, give eye unto you. Acts chapter 3, verse 6. What do you have to offer? The world will not hear you except there's something you have to offer. One, one of the commodities that are, is that's in high demand in a time like this is the commodity, the treasure of miracles. Any Christian, any believer, any man of God, any prophet, any pastor, any teacher that will carry the miracles that the world is seeking after they will become a sought after man of God. Jesus returned and there was a proclamation. He said, all men seek for thee. The same man in John 1 verse 10 that they rejected. He came and now they sought for him. Faith went abroad because he came back with power. He came back with glory. He came back with miracles. Begin to cry. Lord, use me. Lord, use me. In the archives of time, what will be said of you when you are gone? What will be your legacy? What will you be remembered of? They are men we still call them today who are dead and gone. But then, in, 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 in the archives of time, in the screws of men, in, before angels and before men, there's still a testimony of them that they passed they pass this way. Their works, the mighty works, men. Men like Prophet Maron Branham, men like women like Prophet Eskatrin Kuma, men like Prophet Tibi Joshua, men like the Bishop of Yodapo, Apostle, Apostle Joseph Suleiman. When they are gone, they are at the, in, in, in the sand of time, their footprints will still be established because they operated in realms in God that is still a testimony. That will abide till the coming of Christ. I speak to you today. What will you be remembered of? That you build houses, houses will collapse. That you build bridges, bridges will collapse. They are eternal legacies. They are legacies, operations that that become a monument in Zion. That even when you are gone, it becomes a monument. It becomes a testament. It becomes an evidence that this man was here. And every time the patriarchs of old, the journey and they had an encounter with God, they raised altar of stone. The altar of stone was a memorial. That in the years to come, the sons of Zion could see and remember something happened here. What will be remembered of you? What is the legacy? What is the stone you are raising? The Bible says, We, first Peter, second Peter 2, verse 5, we as lively stones. But are you really a stone that will stand the test of time? What will you be remembered of? I want to be an evidence that when men come to me, they will see God. When they encounter me as a prophet, they will see God. They will hear God. They will see God in display. They will see the hand of God in the face of men. Can you be that man? Can you be that woman? Why not decide today? God, make me that vessel. Make me that instrument. Make me a Make me that man that the world is looking after. Make me that evidence that Jesus is alive. How can you prove to men that Jesus is alive without miracles? He said, No man can do this work. John chapter 3. No man can do this work except God be with him. Except God be with him. The world is tired of talkers. God is looking for men that can manifest. The world is looking for men that can manifest. It's time to become radical. These are the days of the acts of God. We are going to see a fresh display of Pentecost manifestations. Blind eyes opening in the church. Lame walking. Dead coming back to church. Back to life. Multiplying of bread. I'm talking about dimensions in God that we come for a communion service without wine and we, we bless water and water turn to wine we take for communion. I'm talking about the, 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 the dimensions and the ages where you don't need to take, a, take a, a plane ticket to go to the next country to preach. You sit in your office and you appear on the other side. My God, God is the same yesterday, today and forevermore. 
John uh, God is the same yesterday today and forever more decide to be that man I want to conclude at this juncture if you will operate I want to conclude by saying these are the days of practical Christianity God are the days of theoretical Christianity we will say things without seeing them manifest we say things without experiencing them in these days we are going to preach by works so if you are not carrying evidence the world is too busy to hear you these are the days of practical Christianity the disciples after they tried nothing to show in John chapter 21 they went back to fishing but when Christ rose from the dead and they encountered Jesus afresh and received the Holy Ghost they began to manifest the acts of God and in first John 1 verse 1 the day testifying speaking says and the things we will begin to hear which our eyes have seen and our our hands have handled this word of life we bring unto you the things we have heard our eyes have seen this and our hands have handled I mean they were not only speaking the gospel in the head they were not only preaching the gospel they have seen Jesus manifest this time their hands had handled they carried the evidence they said we bring unto you this word of life Corinthians 2 verse 9 the Bible says eyes have not seen ears have not heard 